here's the Leica M9. And today I'm gonna to be talking about using this in collaboration with Dehancer Film Emulation. In a way, this video is brought to you by Dehancer. They reached out to me a couple of weeks ago and asked me if I'd be interested in trying out their film emulation software. Uh, film emulation is something that I've been, you know, pretty familiar with uh, over the over the last several years. Uh, I've used a lot of like Lightroom plugins and stuff like that. So when Dehancer reached out, I was aware of who they were. I'd never actually tried their software, but I was super excited at the opportunity to check it out. Audrey and I had a trip scheduled, ironically, the weekend. Uh, of the week that they reached out to me and I was like, oh, this is perfect. You know, road trip, three days, I'll take the M9, I'll take some photos, I'll use Dehancer for the photos and I'll, you know, talk about it on the channel. They reached out to me on a Wednesday. On Friday at about five in the afternoon after a day of work, we both headed out to the Omaha airport and narrowly <laughs> caught our flight to Atlanta, Georgia. So we flew to Atlanta, Georgia. We had essentially 72 hours and uh, the itinerary was a bit crazy. So we were flying from Omaha to Atlanta. We were then driving from the Atlanta airport to Dallas, Georgia. Then we were driving from Dallas to Dahlonega to pick up a truck uh, that we just purchased. We were driving that truck to Dallas, Georgia uh, to celebrate Audrey's her dad's wife, what we call her Nancy. We were celebrating Nancy's 60th birthday. It was a surprise party. It was a great time. So after that, we spent the night in Dallas, then drove from Dallas to Chattanooga the next day in the new truck. Um, hung out with a couple of, couple of friends in Chattanooga, had lunch, drove from Chattanooga to Nashville, had dinner with my mom uh, and got to hang out for a little bit and then drove from Nashville to St. Louis. We got to St. Louis at about 1130 probably, slept in a Cracker Barrel parking lot, and then drove the next morning from uh, that Cracker Barrel parking lot back to Omaha, got back, you know, mid to late afternoon, and then got up and, you know, work week started on Tuesday. Um, so that was a crazy experience, but the perfect opportunity to test a film emulation software. So instead of taking the M6 like I normally would have, I decided to just take the M9. Uh, on the M9 was the 50 millimeter 1.4 Zeiss. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you know the lens that it typically always lives on either this or the uh, M6 or the M4. It's the 35. So I broke out the 35 uh, and had it ready to go and realized that the focus mechanism wasn't working. And so I found that out and thought, okay, well, I guess the 35 needs to uh, visit the repair shop. So I threw the 50 on and that's the lens that stuck with me. It's also gonna be the lens that I'm shooting with over the next uh, you know, month or two as the 35 is now in Germany uh, being repaired. I did get a pretty good mix of photos and I was, I was happy. I was really happy with the uh, Dehancer 
plugin. I was really happy with the results. It was super easy to use. I thought it was easy to, especially once I discovered the save kind of a template uh, where you create a template of, you know, say you're shooting, you want portrait 800, you want it push to stop, you want this amount of grain, you don't want halation, whatever, um, whatever you set up, you can create a template and then it's really easy to bring a set in and uh, make, make a set of photos look, look similar. So once I discovered that, you know, the, the software itself just worked pretty flawlessly. Um, I wish the, the work through process was a little smoother, but I, you know, it's a trade off. I love the fact that it's a plugin because it can get around some of the um, limitations of Adobe, of simple Adobe Lightroom presets. And you get a much better result um, immediately because of that. The other thing I don't like is it saves the images as TIFFs. You can't really get back in and edit. You just have to re-edit the image. But I did find it to be a pretty, you know, pretty straightforward uh, process. And I can't really complain about the, uh, the ease of use. The customer support team seemed great. I'm sure if I had any larger issues that they would be more than happy to help and it'd probably be taken care of in a timely manner. Especially when paired with a camera like the M9. Uh, the M9 is a, you know, very analog-esque camera. You can get pretty close to a film experience. Uh, I'm not going to be the channel that tells you one-to-one -one how actually accurate this is in comparison to a roll of film. There's so many factors that go into it. I don't even, you know, my brain doesn't even work that way. I don't even want to get into that. I'm sure there's other channels that are uh, comparing the accuracy. But what I'm looking for in a film emulation software is, is it easy and intuitive to use? Do you have options? And then do you have the ability to focus in? And what I mean is when I shoot film, I typically, if I'm shooting 35, I'm shooting Tri-X 400, I'm shooting Portra 800, or I'm shooting Ektachrome. That's it. If I'm shooting... 4x5, I'm shooting Ilford HP5, or I'm shooting Portra 160, and maybe occasionally Ektachrome. That's it, though. So, I mean, that's five film stocks. It's not very complex. It's pretty, you know, I like to stick with consistency. I like consistent results. I'm sure there's, there's films out there that I'd like more than the ones I'm using, but I have no interest in trying them. And that's kind of how I feel about the film emulation. Yeah, I mean, other than that, I'm happy with it, you know. I, uh, I, I give it a thumbs up. I wouldn't tell you. Uh, I wouldn't tell you to go check it out if I didn't think it was good. I really do think they have decent software. Since they reached out to me three weeks ago, there's been two updates to the software. So that, that's a really good sign. It means that they're actively, you know, looking for ways to improve they're taking customer feedback that's all they asked for in this video was we don't care if it's negative we don't care if it's positive we just want feedback so my feedback would be keep streamlining you know work on the the workflow of the of the process from the install it was a little clunky all the way to you know i've got a set of photos that i need to edit how can we make that easier how can we make that easier um for direct advice like Maybe if you could get into the, the photo instead of having just like a hard saved TIFF. Um, I don't even know what I'm talking about, though. Like, if we're being honest, I thought the, the process was fine. I spent about four hours with it, uh, you know, four to six hours with it, and I'm sure I'll continue to use it more. Here's a quick look at the software. Uh, just opening up the plugin here. It's super easy to navigate into. You've got two segments when you log in. You've got presets and profiles. Profiles is just all of the film profiles. They've got quite a robust selection. A little bit overwhelming, but it's not a bad thing. Like you're pretty, you can be pretty confident that you'll find something you like. You can sort it, favorites, color, motion picture, color positive. Uh, then over here on the right, you've got uh, collapsible menus. And basically, this is where you're going to do all the dirty work. Um, you see that checkbox on the right um, that basically activates or deactivates the effect. So uh, let's go ahead and just select a film type. So we'll just uh, go through this image really quick. I'm not going to talk too much about, uh, you know, 
obviously um, you've got different options, white point, black point. If you want to learn what that stuff is, there's better videos out there um, with better explanations. But film grain, uh, it could use a little room for improvement. I think um, the smallest size is just, it, I wish there was more room to adjust on the um, low end because I don't like a lot of grain um, in my images. So I wish it, it gave you more capability there. Halation, I usually turn that off. Um, let me zoom in and I'll show you kind of what this, uh, what this does. So, so you see at her arm, um, really kind of clear what that looks like. It, this isn't going to occur if you're shooting um, photographic film. It, it would occur more if you're shooting, uh, you know, cinema film, motion picture. So I usually just turn it off. Bloom, I like the bloom, but you can definitely go overboard. Um, but this, again, this is a feature that you can't really do in Lightroom. And, you know, by, by way of having this as an external plugin, it gives you the ability to do this. Uh, that's, you know, if you used a uh, diffusion filter or a Black Pro, you, that's kind of a similar effect. Bloom is just taking care of that digitally. So you can create a preset. Um, all you have to do is go click this plus button right here. Boom. And then you, uh, you'll name your preset. So let's see, uh, YouTube tings. There we go. Um, so yeah, it, it's super easy. And once you've created that preset, you can apply that to as many images as you want, which makes editing a set pretty easy. Click okay. It'll take you back to Lightroom. And then usually it'll pull up one right next. I've got it rating sorted right now, so it won't, but it'll pull up your image either in a stack or right beside your, um, your original DNG or raw file. So really quick, just to show you how easy it is to apply your preset once you've made it, you'll just edit in Dehancer, go to presets, and then you'll see right there, it's our preset, YouTube ting, and boom, it's on. So original preset, super easy, super quick. I'm not the person to get into the details. It's just not my thing. Uh, but I think it can be a really good tool if you want, you know, consistent color in your images, a consistent feel to your images, and you want the ability to bring more analog feeling into your digital photography. I think it's a great resource. So highly recommend checking it out. Dehancer, thank you guys. Uh, hopefully this isn't the last time that, that we work together. Um, because so far the experience has been really, really pleasant. It's cold as hell here in Omaha. We've got snow on the ground. It's kind of miserable. I'm looking, looking forward to getting back down south and, uh, you know, warming up for a, a couple of weeks. But until next time.